Okay, so today we're going to work on multiplication properties of exponents, which is different from what we did yesterday. Um, so again, if you can follow the rules, you're going to do okay. And your rules are all on the foldable that we're making right now. So before we do anything on our foldable, we're going to work on this really fast. Expanded form just means to literally make it bigger, right? So what does 2 to the 1st times 2 to the 1st mean? Four. 2 times 2 is what it is in expanded form. And then, so that means what? It equals 4. So power of what? Yeah, 2 to the power of 2. So I want you to look for a pattern, okay? All right, 2 cubed means what? Two times two times two. Times two. Okay, two cubed is two times two times two times two to the first is times another two. So it doesn't really matter to me what it equals. What I'm trying to get you to see is how many twos are happening here. So this is really two to the power of four. Okay. Keep going. 2 squared, 2 times 2, times another 2 squared. So not times another 2 times 2. So that's 2 to the 4. Notice it's the same, these two lines, the purple and the green. Okay? 2 to the 4th. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So how many is that? 2 to the 6. And our last one, 2 times 2 times 2 is 2 to the 3rd, times 2 times 2 times 2. How many 2's? 2 to the 6. Okay, so what um, are you noticing we are doing? What pattern do you see? Okay, that's not, yeah, we are expanding, but what's the pattern? You were right, Ivan, what did you say? Good. Yeah, 1 and 1 is 2. 3 and 1 is 4. 2 and 2 is 4. 4 and 2 is 6. 3 and 3 is 6. Notice we're not multiplying the exponents. Even though we have a multiplication sign in between, we're not multiplying the exponents. We are adding them. Are we changing the base number, the big number? No, we're not saying 2 times 2 is 4. We keep the base the same. It's 2. They're all a common base of 2. And we're just adding the exponent, okay? So now we're going to go to our foldable because this is our first rule for today. Okay, so we're going to look at some examples that use that rule that we just put on our foldable. So common bases is what? 11. Oh, I apologize. You all see it now? Okay. So common bases are 11. So what do we do with that? Keep it the same. And then what do we do the exponents? So 11 to the seventh power. Okay, and I, I could actually simplify that more because 11 to the 7th is a really giant number, right? Yeah, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to stop for there. Okay, ooh. What do I do when there's like negative sign in there? Yeah, I mean, you just use the same rule. The base is x, and what is 7 plus negative 5? 2. Now, some of you are like, well, yesterday we learned that you bring negative 5 to the denominator, which we could do, we could do x to the 7th over x to the 5th. We're actually going to learn about what you do with this tomorrow, but this just means to subtract. 5 minus 7 is 2. Okay? But for today, just remember you are adding exponents of common bases. Okay, here's where it gets kind of weird, because remember I told you you don't multiply the bases. However, we have numbers here, the 2 and the 5, that don't have exponents. 
What are these numbers called? They're, they start, it starts with a C. Good, it's a coefficient. The coefficient is not attached to this power of four. The power of four applies to the N. The power of six applies to the N. So the two and five are just regular old numbers. Okay, so we just multiply those regular old numbers. Two times five is 10. The ones you don't multiply are the bases. The bases here are the ends. So um, let me let me clarify. So if you had uh, 4x to the power of 3, I'm just making this up. This number here is called a coefficient. It is not your base. What is your base? The x is your base. And then the three is your, it's your power. Okay, the rule says you don't multiply your base. So you do multiply your coefficients just like normal numbers, okay? Unless you have a number that is your base. Do you see how 11 here is not your coefficient? This is, 11 is your base here. The two and the five over here are your coefficients, so you have to multiply them. Okay, you all with me? Yes. Okay, so we gotta finish this one up. We have the 10, two times five is 10, n and n just say is n, what do we do with the four and the six? So we got 10, n power of 10. Okay. okay, same rules apply here. Don't freak out, we have some coefficients. The three and the negative five. I'm sorry. The three, yeah. The three and the negative five. What do you do with the coefficients? Multiply them like regular old numbers. Three times negative five is negative fifteen. Okay. And then we have some bases. We have two different bases. We have x and we have y. So we leave those alone. We don't put a two in front of them or do anything weird like that. Now we have to decide what we do with the exponent. So on the x over here, we've got a two as our exponent and a three. So it's x to the fifth power. What exponent is on y? One. one. If it was a zero, then the whole thing would be one. y to the first power. There's one y there. So there's y to the first power, and then there's y to the negative fourth. What is one plus negative four? Okay. You cannot leave your answer like this. Yes, why not? This is yesterday's lesson right here. You have a negative exponent. You can't leave that. Now, can you leave this negative 15? Sure, you leave that on top. Can we leave the x to the fifth? Sure, it's positive. We're good. But I have to bring my negative exponent to the denominator and make it positive. So that is the simplified version of this. This is simplified in comparison to this. Okay? So really, we just applied two lessons. Yesterday's lesson of bringing the negative exponent to the denominator and today's lesson with adding exponents, okay? So you're going to have multiple, quote-unquote, rules that you're applying on this stuff. Okay. Let's keep going. Five and six. All right. So, what's really happening here? What are these parentheses? What does that mean? Yeah, it just means we're multiplying. It's nothing fancy. It just means multiply. Okay, what do I do with this three? Yeah, because what is it? It's just a coefficient. And there's nothing else to multiply it to, right? Except maybe like a one. There's an understood one here. So, three times one is just three. Okay. All right, so what are our two bases we're dealing with? X and Y. Okay. All right, what about our x's? Uh, our exponent for our x's are negative 2 and 1. Yes, there is an understood 1 as an exponent. So what is negative 2 plus 1? Hmm, okay. No, negative x is different than x to the negative 1. Different things. They're not the same. Good question, though. 
Because the negative here is multiplying times the x, and the negative here is multiplying times the power of 1. So the, that's not a power, and this is, okay? No. Because remember, negative x, hold on, let me get my pens back. Negative x just means negative x. It literally means negative 1 times x. X to the negative 1 power means 1 over X. Because remember, you have to bring it to the denominator. Okay? Good questions. Erase that. Okay. Good. All right, now we're going to deal with our Y's. Exponent of Y here is 3 and for a total of 6, not 9. Okay, are we done? Why not? You can't leave that negative exponent. What do we do with the 3? Leave it. What do we do with the x and the negative 1? Bring it down. Do I have to write a 1 up here? No, but I can. I could either write x to the 1 or just x. It means the same thing. Okay? And then y to the 6? Leave it. Leave it up top. And I'm done. Remember, if it's negative 1 power, what do we just talk about? Remember, oh, you were talking about leave it as a negative 1. Remember, when you bring it down, it changes to a positive 1. So you could have this here. It means the same thing. Okay? All right, last one here is 2 to the n times 2 to the n plus 2 times 2. Well, okay, is, are the 2's coefficients or are they bases? They're bases, so we don't multiply 2 times 2 times 2. We leave it alone, right? So what are our exponents? n, n plus 2, and 1. So we're literally just adding all those things together. Combining like terms. So how many n's do we have? 2n plus 3. And it's all in your exponent. And that's it. We don't simplify that. You see what I did? I just added exponents. This is an n. This is an n plus 2. This is a 1. So these are the exponents. I'm adding them together. Because my rule says common bases add exponents. 2n plus 3. Any questions on? That's rule number 1 we're learning today. We're learning more than one rule. And it all has to do with multiplication. So it's kind of similar. Because what do you do when you multiply exponents? You're really adding them. So you're going to see that a lot of the stuff we're doing today is similar. Okay, let's move on. Okay, what's the difference here from what we were doing before? There's a power to a power. So let's keep going. So the difference here is we're not multiplying bases, we're multiplying a power and a power. So it's literally saying x to the third to the second power. So literally we're saying, um, I can say literally a lot today, um, factored form. Okay. x to the third times, or squared means x to the third times x to the third, right? We're doing x to the third twice. That's what the power of 2 means here. So what is that in expanded form? Yeah, x times x times x. So 3x's and then times x times x times x. So how many x's do we really have here? Six. Six. Okay. All right. So what would be the factor form for a to the fifth to the third? a to the 5 times a to the 5 times a to the 5, a to the 5th. Does a to the 5th three different times? That's what a power to a power does. So, okay, get ready. We're going to squish it in here. a to the 5th is a times a times a times a times a. <laughs> Let's see if I can get it all in here times another a to the fifth, a times a times a times a times a times another a to the fifth, 
times a times a times a times a times a. I think I got it all. Did I get it? Okay, so how many A's did I just write out? 15. Noticing a pattern? Good. And y squared to the fourth? Good. y2 four different times. y2 times y2 times y2. Okay, so y squared is y times y times another y squared, y times y times another y squared, y times y times another y squared, y times y. I know, it seems redundant, but there's a reason why. It's showing you, it's proving to you the rule. Okay, how many y's? Okay, so when you have a power to a power, what are you just doing with exponents? <laughs> Look at the rule. It's going 3 times 2, 6, 5 times 3, 15, 2 times 4, 8. What? Yes, you're multiplying the exponents. Yes. When you're taking a power to a power, you're really just, it's kind of like distributing. Those are little arrows. So you're doing 2 times 3 is x to the 6th. 3 times 5, a to the 15th. 4 times 2, y to the 8th. Okay? So let's go to our foldable. Okay, so quickly do um, 7... 8, 9, and 10 on your own. Just see how you do. Just see how you do really fast. And then we're going to talk about them in just a second. Okay, so let's look at 7. Your base was y. And what was your exponent? No, no, no. What's your answer to the exponent? 12. Thank you. Yeah, I was like 6. 6 times 2 is 12. That one's nice and basic. Okay, number eight, your base was x, and you had four times negative two, which is negative eight, but I don't leave it. What do I do? Cannot leave this. I will take off points if you leave this as your answer. One over x to the positive eight. It becomes po positive when you move it to the denominator. That's our rule from yesterday. Okay, number nine. Okay. Okay. This is kind of a, a pem dossy situation. What do you think we're going to do first? You're going to distribute the um, integers here. I'm sorry, not the energy, the exponents here. You're going to multiply first because we have the parentheses going on. So we have c to the fifth times c to the three times negative one power. Good. Okay, now we don't have a power to a power situation. We have our first rule we learned. Common basis, we're multiplying. What do we do with the exponents? Add. What is 5 plus negative 3? Using my rules. Okay, the last one is kind of easy in comparison to the other ones. It's 4 to the 9th. And then it's a really big number if we put in our calculator, right? We're just going to leave it like that. Okay? This guy's a multiple choice question number 11. Um, if y equals x to the 5th, then what is equivalent to x to the 20th? Okay. Okay. Because if 1y is x to the 5th, then, oops, that would be not a 5. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Then you're saying y to the fourth would be so each one of these is a y, right? Because it's telling us that y equals x to the fifth. Okay, so each one of these is a y. So when we have common bases, we keep the base and we add the exponent, and that's what we were looking for. Y to the twentieth. I'm sorry, x to the 20th is the same thing as 4y's. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. It's kind of like a little logic question right there. Okay, turn it on over. Okay, this one is, a, this is our last rule we're learning. So let's go to our, uh, our foldable again one more time. 
and then fill that in for our last rule for today. Okay, so number 12, you're just distributing 5 to the powers of the x and the y. So you just get x to the 5th, y to the 5th. Okay, so um, 13 is a little different in that you have a random coefficient in here, don't you? That's okay. The 3, the power of 3 still applies to that. You don't multiply negative 2 times 3. You multiply it, you bring it to the power. So it's negative 2 to the power of 3. So this 3 applies to the power of the both the base and the coefficient. So we have negative 2 to the third power, and we have x to the sixth power times, because there's nothing going on in between here, 3 to the second power, x to the second power. Now we're going back to our first rule. Okay? Okay, first off, what is negative 2 to the third power? Yeah, it's negative 8. X to the sixth times. What's 3 squared? 9. Okay. So we have coefficients here. What are we going to do with the regular old coefficients? Coefficients. They're just numbers. What if I told you 2 times 3? Would you add those? No. You would multiply them. So this would be negative 72. Numbers are numbers. Exponents are the ones that have the weird rules. So the little numbers, the exponents, now we, what do we do with those? Add them. So keep the x as your base, and your exponent would be 8. Well, what about, I thought you had to bring a negative to the denominator. Only on exponents. This is not an exponent. This is just a coefficient. Okay? 14. Okay, what do we do first? Do we multiply? Do we do this guy over here? What Do we do this? You do the parentheses first. I mean, you could bring that down. It's not going to affect anything. Um, so we have 2 to the second power, because this is applying to the 2 and to the x. And then x to the 6 times x to the negative 4. Okay. What is 2 times 2? 4. Or 2 squared. Oops. 4. <laughs> and then common bases of x. What are you doing with their exponents? Add them. 6 plus negative 4. 2. Okay. All right. What do I do with fractions? Same thing. Yeah. It actually applies to the numerator and to the denominator of your fraction. Okay? See what I did? I applied this exponent to both the numerator and the denominator. Okay? And then we have c to the 14th, and then we have d to the 6th. Are we done? Almost. We just have to simplify this right here. What is 1 squared? 1. And what is 5 squared? 25. C to the 6. So is there anything else we can simplify? Nope. So they're not, as long as you remember the rules, they look complicated, but they're not that tricky. It's just adding or multiplying, right? Okay. What do we do first on number 16? Yeah, we're going to deal with these parentheses here because we have a power of 3 power to a power. So this power of 3 is going to be applied to the 5, so 5 cubed, a to the 12th, b to the negative 6, c to the 3, and then times the rest of it. 3 times, uh, times 3, a to the negative 8, b to the positive 8. Okay. We have big coefficients. First off, what's 5 to the third? 5 times 5 is 25, times another 5 is 125, and then times 3 because of this coefficient. What's 125 times 3? Okay. So 375 is our coefficient. I did 5 cubed times 3. It's 375. They're regular big numbers, so we're good. 
Okay, but now we have some bases here, a to the 12th and a to the negative 8th. So what do we do? Okay, you add the exponent. So a to the 12 plus negative 8 is? 4. Good. And then we've got some b's. We have a negative 6 and a positive 8. Negative 6 plus 8 is b squared. And then we only have a 1c, so we just leave that alone. And we are done. Okay, a couple more and then we'll finish up. Write an expression that represents the area of a rectangle with sides measuring 3x cubed y squared z and 6xy to the fifth z to the third. Woo! Okay, so basically one of these is our length and one of them is our width. It doesn't matter which one because what's our volume, I'm sorry, our area formula? Length times width right so basically we're just multiplying these together it's just you know it's just wanting to make it an application problem but there's no difference in what we've been doing in this problem so go ahead and try that on your own really fast you're just multiplying there's no power to a power Okay, so what did you do with the 3 and the 6? Okay, so what did you get? 18. What about how many x's? 4. Yes, there was a 1 right here, remember? How many y's? 7. How many z's? 4. And we're done. That's our area of the rectangle. Because, yeah, there's a, that's a 1 right there. And this is 5 and 2 is 7. Um, okay, so the rest of these, I'm actually, I'll talk about same rules apply with, this is actually, what is this called? These kind of numbers. Scientific notation. I'm going to talk about these tomorrow since we're running out of time. Okay? So we're going to end that. We're going to end it here.